It turns out I was more pleased than disappointed with Exodus, Gods and Kings. Let's start with what the film does best. The 3D photography brought ancient Egypt alive like I've never seen before at the movies. There is amazing attention to detail. Nearly always something interesting both up close and in the background. You'll never forget the scene where Pharaoh's wife wakes up with a start in the middle of the night to find frogs crawling all over her. And then there's the epic music we've come to expect from biblical blockbusters, all first rate. Now here's something that isn't first rate, casting an 11-year-old boy to play God. Someone that age just doesn't have the gravitas or maturity. It's not the child actor's fault, it was just a quirky, creative decision. Here's something else you may notice. Director Ridley Scott and the writers leave out all but one of the dramatic confrontations between Moses and Pharaoh that happen between the plagues. Instead, they insert a scene before the plagues in which the Hebrews act like terrorists. That's what I mean about reinventing the story too much. On the other hand, there has to be some room for creative license because the movie is two and a half hours long. While it takes less than an hour to read the 12 or so chapters of Exodus covered in the film. I confess, the movie waters down the parting of the Red Sea, but the tsunami that crashes over Pharaoh and his army would make Cecil B. DeMille jealous. Here's my verdict. I give the film a grade of B+. Now, if Roma Downey had been the director, I would have expected more in terms of faithfulness to the original story. But the actual director, Ridley Scott, does not have her background. I believe he made a legitimate effort to turn out a great movie with all the techniques at his disposal. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.